Well, hello, Monica Stenberg here. And once again, it is my pleasure and privilege to be with you, to open up the word, to share some things from the scriptures with you. Boy, we are sure living in days like we have never seen before. But I want to encourage you because the greatest days of the church are upon us. They really are. The Lord so long ago revealed through uh, John uh, the things that would unfold. And we are surely living in those days. Now, it would be great if we could figure out exactly where we are and what what's that and what's this. And, and some of that is becoming clearer as we go. But I, as I shared with many of you last time we were together, I believe that in order to really get clear about what's happening and where we're going, we must first to get our focus on the one that is seated on the throne. Not only get our focus on him, but keep and maintain our focus on him. The days that we live in, I believe deception is far more rampant. Information is rampant. Uh, there's just such subtleties with things. It's amazing to me how many winds of doctrine are around and in, in the different forms that they come in. And that even within the Christian world, there are these uh, threads where you have to be really careful because the Word of God is our plumb line. But the enemy, as we know, will take the Word and then spin it in a way that is not the Lord speaking, but him using that. We see an example of that in the book of Luke, I believe chapter four, where it after Jesus is baptized in the river Jordan, that he's then led to the wilderness by the Spirit And when he's there fasting and and fasting in prayer for 40 days and 40 nights, we see that the Satan himself comes and presents himself to Jesus and begins to uh, ask him things. He he says to him, if you're the son of man, take these rocks and make them uh, bread, these stones and make them bread and, you know, eat. And, and Jesus replies with the word. And then the enemy uses the word. He, he even says to him, if you're the son of God, then, uh, cast yourself down. He takes him to a high place in the city. And he says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written that he shall give his angels charge concerning you, lest you should dash your foot against stone. So he takes the scriptures and the promise of God, catch that, the promise of God, and he presents it in a way to entice him to do something that he shouldn't. Well, Jesus, having the word within him, because not just because he was the son of God, because that's not why, but because he was raised in a home where they would have been teaching him to read and to memorize the scriptures as from very young very young, he's probably six years old. As a, as a Jewish boy, he would have known the scriptures. And so he replies back, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So in other words, I'm not going to test God and throw myself down to see if he does it. So he knew that's inappropriate. So it's so important that we understand that the enemy still does this. He still takes something out of the word of God and he'll weave it in to something else. But it is absolutely imperative that we understand the word of God, that we follow the word of God and that we use it as our weapon and we aren't deceived by the actual word. Boy, that is confusing. Can you imagine being deceived by the word? None of us want to be that. I know that I myself have prayed and continue to pray, Lord, don't let me be deceived. Some of you have heard me say, that's the thing about deception. It's so deceiving. Rebellion is knowing something's wrong and, and doing it anyways. Or you know, disobedience and rebellion. But deception is believing that it's the right thing and doing it. And none of us want to be in that. And it is absolutely important that we stay before the throne of God, that we stay open before God. You know, I love the this scripture passage here I want to share with you this morning. Hebrews 4, 12 through 16 says this, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Whose sight? The word of God's sight. Jesus's sight. Jesus is the word of God. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Who do we have to do with? Jesus. That's who we have to do with. He's the one that we are before. We need to be very 
very aware of who we answer to, who we receive orders from, who we get direction and understanding from. It is the Lord himself and not just every other preacher, not me. You don't get your understanding through me. I may be a part of what God uses, but God himself seated on the throne gives you understanding and and nothing is hidden from him. He sees everything that's going on. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You know, I love that passage that we ought to come boldly before the throne of grace in times of need to obtain mercy. And you know, often those are like when someone's sick, when we need help with provision, when we feel weak, when we're going through something tough, we think that's when. But let me tell you, we are living in days where we need his help to discern truth, to discern deception, to know, is that the spirit of God? We need to have his mercy reveal truth. And the way we do that is exactly here, that we come, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. Well, let's take a look at that throne of grace. In the book of Revelation, we were talking about John, who had a revelation uh, of Jesus. In the in the book of Revelation, we read this in chapter four. He has a, his eyes are open and he sees the throne room. So let's take a look at that. Revelation 4, starting at verse 2. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a stardust stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne to worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the Lord saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Do you understand who we're talking about here? This is a revelation of the throne. This throne is forever. This is the kingdom uh, that will be eternal. It is the eternal kingdom. We get another glimpse of this throne in the book of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah in chapter six says this, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. Interesting. So we see again around the throne, these creatures with eyes and wings, these unique uh, non-human creatures declaring the glory of God. Oh, let me tell you, 
This kingdom is forever. You know, and I'm reminded of another uh, glimpse of, of the throne uh, that another prophet had. And it's in the book of Ezekiel. In, in chapter one, it says, Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chabar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. Verse 26 says, and above the firmament over the heads was the likeness of a throne. So it says above the firmament over their heads, the head, their heads is these creatures. He had just described again, these creatures that we saw Isaiah describe. And then we see John describe them. They're, they're in heaven. They're worshiping and calling out holy is the Lord says above their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone on the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Let me tell you, it is absolutely imperative that we get our focus on the one who sits on the throne, the throne, that eternal throne. And his name is Jesus. You know, Philippians 2, 9 says this, Therefore, God has highly exalted him, referring to Jesus, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, or that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Listen, in the days that we're living in, it is going to be extremely tempting to be running this way and running that way, to be chasing this fight and that fight, to be trying to reestablish things that we think we have lost, to feel like, well, what about my ministry the way I used to do it? What about the, my business and the success there? And what about this? And what about that? Listen, it is absolutely imperative that you take this time and that you begin to refocus. Listen, 2020 is the year that we will behold the Lord. Do you know that 2020? I'll tell you, the Lord spoke it through so many people. He spoke it to me and through me. He spoke it to so many people that as we came into the year 2020, that it would be the year of seeing, that we would behold him, the glory of the Lord. And you're thinking, well, boy, 2020, and there's all these memes out there and all this stuff talking about 2020. But let me tell you something. You are seeing a revelation of Jesus Christ. Just like the book of Revelation, there's some stuff that look crazy, some stuff that don't look good. But yet we are clear that Jesus is being revealed. Jesus Christ is being revealed. And in in the moment of time where he returns, every eye will see and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father because the Father set this plan in motion with his son long ago. And he's going to see it to fulfillment. Do you hear me? We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to fear. We need to get our eyes focused on the throne. And I feel that the Lord is saying to me in this season, I, that my running words are this, get your eyes on the throne. I feel like the Lord is saying, Monica, you must prepare people for their soon and coming King. You need to prepare yourself for him to come and burst through the clouds. There's things in our life that are, are clouding our decision-making and we're running after things that we may think are God, but we must have a revelation of who he is. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you now and I want to pray with you that God would help you to focus and to begin to see. I thank you, Lord. Pray with me. Close your eyes and receive this from the Lord. If you're able, even now, close your eyes and receive. Lord, I ask that in these days ahead, that each of those right now that are listening to this, that, that you would open the heavens above them as you did for Ezekiel and show them visions of you. In the name of Jesus, I declare your eyes will be open. You will not be dim of sight, but you will have the light and the glory of God come and shine in such a way that you will have understanding of what is going on and where you are going and what is coming upon us and no tribulation and no disappointment or any other thing is going to take you off course because you are going to know that the Lord, your God, he is God and he alone is mighty and he is going to fulfill his plan in you and he is going to use you and he is going to bless you. And we are able to be blessed and full of joy, even in times of tribulation. Beloved, I want to tell you right now that you need to settle it in your heart. that times of tribulation and persecution are inevitable for all of us. They cannot be avoided and you don't need to be afraid. 
because God will strengthen you. He will cause you to come out in power and in strength. Do not be afraid, but be fully engaged in the realities of heaven in this season. Lord, I thank you that you are doing it. You are causing our eyes to be open. 2020 is a year of seeing and beholding the glory of the Lord, and it will become visible. We will see it in the spirit first, your power and your authority. And I declare that we will then see it on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, thanks for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And by the way, if you're interested in starting a house church, whether under The Rock, a four-square church, or under Solid Lives, our global discipleship ministry, then go to one of those websites and hit house churches. Go to therock.com for The Rock and solidlives.com for Solid Lives. We'd love to partner with you to start a house church and to advance the kingdom of God together.